Now hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another episode of my infamous discovering interesting airports all around the world series. Yeah, where I just, you know, travel around in the flight simulator and, you know, check out the most interesting airports that there are, try landing some planes on it. If it's a small runway, then of course we're gonna try operating some big planes as well for the challenge. Now, now obviously I get a lot of suggestions for airports and video ideas every single day and recently one of the most suggested at airports has been Half Moon Bay Airport, which is in California. In fact, we are just south of San Francisco. This is not very far away from the city, actually. You know, right here we have the San Francisco Bay with KSFO, which is San Francisco's main airport. Very big one, very nice one as well, actually. That's what she said. And down here is the Golden Gate Bridge, where we have actually tried landing some planes on before. Very interesting challenge. But Half Moon Bay is also very close to all that. It's down here. And as you can see, this is a very, very small runway. Now, yes, this is San Francisco's General Aviation Airport, I guess. This is, I guess, the place where most of the San Francisco people learn to fly at. Pretty nice airport, but we can already see this is not a long runway, is it? Which means, of course, that we're gonna try some big planes here. Now, this uh, airport is nicely detailed here in the flight simulator. And yes, there's a lot of Cessnas here. Again, there's a flight school here so that people can learn how to fly at this airport. And well, for what it is, it's perfect, right? Now, this runway is indeed not very long. 1,500 meters could definitely be longer, uh, but that's going to be, you know, long enough for something like a Cessna, I guess. <laughs> See if that's true. There we go. We have just taken off a Cessna out of Half Moon Bay Airport. Obviously, we didn't use the whole runway. Now, today, let's ask the infamous question, what would happen if San Francisco's main airport would fail and all the planes would have to divert to another airport like this one <laughs> okay that's probably not a very good idea you know next to KSFO we also have airports like Oakland in the area which are probably more suitable places for big airliners but of course because I'm Swiss 01 I'm gonna go for Half Moon Bay now let's try some interesting planes here I can imagine that this place is also used by a lot of you know private jets and all that stuff it's time for my monthly dose of the Dassault Falcon FA-50, which is a three-engine plane, as you can see. This is actually the most modern plane with three jet engines. So let's see if it can land at Half Moon Bay Airport. All right, now, welcome aboard the Dassault Falcon FA-50. Let's land it here. Now, honestly, I don't know if this plane is actually allowed to operate at places like this in real life. I mean, 1,500 meters, that's like not too short, but I guess let's do some testing. Let's find out if this plane can land here. Oh, all right. You know what? That landing was not too bad. Let's get this plane stopped, though. Which we have. Perfect. All right, we have now landed the FA-50, the Dassault Falcon. That was not a good landing, necessarily, but it was uh, successful enough, right? Now, let's move on to a bigger plane. You know, the Dassault Falcon, it didn't have any issues here, so that's good. Maybe let's go a little bigger. Let's try some a plane that we don't always try, I guess. How about the Antonov Ant-225? Just kidding. That's gonna come later. Now, the thing is, this airport is actually an old military military airport, which you can tell by its pretty short, you know, runway. And later on, it obviously got turned into a civilian airport. But you know, back in the 40s, planes didn't need a long runway, and especially the military planes. So 1500 meters was just fine enough, which it kind of isn't these days anymore. Can we still land some kind of military plane here? Let's try a plane that I actually don't like to land very much, actually. This is not a very easily landable plane, is it? This is the F-3 35. This is actually a VTOL plane, meaning that it can land and take off vertically, which makes it very, very interesting. Let's see if it can also land at Half Moon Bay. Alright, that was a landing, I guess. Let's get it stopped. Here we go. Now, this plane, it doesn't have reverse thrust, but anyway, we kind of did stop here on this runway, even though we did use most of the runway. But other than that, this was quite a nice landing. So no problem about that. Even the F-35 can operate here if the main airport of KSFO fails, even though I don't think that airport is used for military, but that's another story. Now, let's try something like an A320 this time around. No, I haven't used the A320 in a while now. You know, all 
always using the 737, which is kind of the Boeing equivalent to this plane. Gets boring after a while, so let's try this one as well. All right, welcome aboard the A320. This is gonna be a very interesting takeoff, I guess. I mean, honestly, we haven't really tried using the A320 on short runways, so I think it's definitely time to get some flaps going and try doing some kind of toga takeoff. Full power, there we go. Let's release the parking brake. The thing is, this plane, it's so similar to the 737 that I think it has a similar runway performance as well. These two planes, they really don't need a long runway. I'm pretty sure the A320 has flown on a short runway like this before, even though it's not really recommended. This plane is really not so small, so using that on a runway like this could kind of get dangerous as well. But, you know, this takeoff, it worked out perfectly fine, so that's good. So yes, you could even fly some A320s here to this airport. But let's go a step bigger, you know? For contrast, let's try the 737 MAX 10 as well, which is a plane often used in the US too. I mean, you know, the MAX is not really used anymore, but, you know, the, the 737 series, I guess. <laughs> All right, welcome aboard the MAX 10, which is a plane that doesn't even exist in real life just yet, but that's another story. Let's get this imaginary plane landed as well. You know, just like the A320, these planes, they don't need a long runway. Let's find out if it does. We do have a city, like, right below the runway, so when you have big jet airliners here, that will be a little bit of a noisier situation in the this town here, but that's not our problem. We did not decide to close down KSFO, did we? So all good. Let's get the 737 landed. And that was not smooth, was it? But there we go. This was a pretty quick stop as well. Not too bad, is it? Very nicely done, I think. Let's check out that landing. That was actually kind of on the on the hard side, I would say. Yeah, look how close we got to the city. I think using jet airliners is not the best for the noise pollution, at least. And that landing was not the best either. <laughs> but all right, that worked out perfectly fine as well. Oh, right now we have stopped. Okay, so we can move on to even bigger planes. Of course, we're gonna try some thing like, let's try another Airbus, you know? I feel like we don't use enough Airbus planes here on the channel, so it's time for another one. A350 it is. Now, this one is quite a bigger plane compared to the 737, but we'll see. Now, see, the thing about the A350 is that it does need quite a long runway. Again, this is not a very small plane, is it? So this will be uh, quite an interesting landing, I guess. Let's just try to make the best out of it. But let me just say one thing. I cannot guarantee that this will be a safe landing or even a stop at all. We might overshoot the runway completely. For example, the reverse thrust power of this plane is pretty weak. See, this plane, it wasn't made for short runways, was it? Let's go around. Yeah, this didn't really work out. Now we crashed it, but whatever. Yeah, that really didn't work out. So, let's move on to a bigger plane, of course. You know, it's just a very, very modern plane. They tend to use a very long runway. Obviously, they don't need to operate on short runways like this in real life. And I can imagine having a longer stop might be more efficient or something. So that makes sense. But no, the A350 cannot fly here at all. All right, now, welcome aboard the 767. That is a plane commonly used in the US, and obviously, it also has to be able to operate at Half Moon Bay in case KSFO fails, right? Very realistic scenario. Now these older Boeing planes, they don't use that long of a runway, so we may be lucky this time around as well. Oh, my landings today aren't very good, are they? But you know, you need to be also able to stop when you have a bad landing, obviously, which we just did. So as you can see, Half Moon Bay is perfect for diverting planes to it. Oh, that was really not good. What's wrong with me today? I don't know. I think maybe the joystick controls here are a little messed up as well, but that's another story. Let's go ahead and move on to our last plane, I guess, the 777. All right, now we'll come aboard the 777, which is a lot bigger than any other plane that we have tried today on the video. Like, honestly, just the engines of the 777 are as large as the 737 fuselage. So this will be a very interesting landing. Not a good landing again, <laughs> but all right, it might be successful. This is actually very close to the edge of the runway, but there we go. So Half Moon Bay isn't as bad as I thought. I mean, you know, landing a plane like an A350 doesn't work here, but the 777, it does work, which is good. Even though it's on empty weight right now, there are no passengers in this plane, but you know, who cares? Now, yes, what can we say about Half Moon Bay Airport? Can it be used as a diversion airport for KSFO? 
No? Obviously. Even though you could, in a very, very big emergency, use this airport for smaller jets like the 737 or an A320, bigger planes like the 767 or maybe even the 777 will probably not be able to operate here safely enough. But you know, maybe the Antonov An-225 might work, which is, by the way, the biggest plane. All right. All right, that was very, very close, but it kind of worked out. Yeah, this plane is pretty, uh... Yeah, this plane is pretty savage. It doesn't need a long runway. Obviously, it's a Soviet plane. And we all know a Soviet plane like this doesn't take off on a runway. The runway takes off on the plane. That was really bad. I apologize. So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.